Most people think travelling around Patia City on a BART bus for 10 BART a journey is an absolute bargain. Yes. But what if I told you that there's a train that goes from Patia Station 50 kilometres all the way down to Satterheap and the beaches there and you'll get change from 10 BART. Wow. Here is my ticket and that has cost me a uh, nine bar one way in a third class fan called carriage let's find out what it's really like they've opened up two new stations one at utapau and a new terminal station at juxamet which is right down by the beach there are actually two railway stations in Patia. One is this one. Patia railway station is the main one, but there's also one at Patia South. So this service is so new, they haven't even updated the indicator board yet, but don't worry about it. This train starts in Bangkok, so you can pick it up from there. That is the train 283 that I'm going to get. I do love these small Thai railway stations. They're quite often like this one, quite beautiful really. Um, only thing, they don't have very many trains. But other than that, they're really great. So at the railway station, they have some toilets, gents disabled and ladies toilet. Beautiful garden, and then you've got your trash can. You've even got somewhere to wash your hands. I mean, this is five star. <laughs> So that was the train announcement. I think they said platform one. I'm not sure there is a platform two. And although Thai trains do have a reputation for running late, I must admit all the trains I've tried to catch recently have been on time. This one was no exception, it arrived exactly at 10.36. So I'm on the train and it's not very crowded. People don't know about this new service, it's only started like in the last four or five days. And I'm on a third class carriage, that's all they have on this train. You get a fan to keep you a bit cool and the windows wind all the way down and they're open in all honesty i think it's the only way to travel certainly for short distances because you get the sounds and the smells and the views directly through the window you feel like you're really in thailand the first stop of the day is just a few minutes after departure it's actually patia south station and a couple of people boarded the train there and a big group got off it there's no ticket office but you can buy tickets on the train so if you're looking for the fastest way to get around it's probably not going to be a train like this it's going to stop frequently in fact the journey time down to juxamet is just over one hour but it's the journey more than the destination perhaps that is interesting this is the total change from the hustle and bustle of being in Patia city centre. One surprise that I got on board was it also stops at Nongnut Gardens and then later on at the water market or the floating market. So the fare can only be 9 baht or less than 9 baht to get to either of those two attractions and I've been charged a lot more going by taxi. And if the train schedule fitted in with what you wanted to do, that'd be a great way to get there. So until last week, this was the end of the line, but now we've got two new stations to go to. One is at the airport at Utapau. I don't know how close it is to the actual airport. And then our final destination, which hopefully I'm going to go and see some beaches. I mean, for nine baht, even if I have to get on the train and go straight back, I'm not going to be complaining. So we stopped at Utapau, this is a new station for the airport. You can see probably that we're not actually in the middle of the airport right now, but he's just announced that you can get a car or a song tail, I'm not sure what it is, to go to the airport. I'll try and find out how far it is. It'd be a pretty interesting way to get on your flight to somewhere else in Thailand, come down on this train and then transfer over to the airport itself and then fly off to Phuket, fly off to Samui, or actually, I think you can fly to other countries. And there were lots of interesting things to see if you looked out of the window all the way down. So your roving view fortress just had a quick look on Google Maps as we were at Utapau railway station. It's about six kilometers away from the airport, so you can walk it with your suitcases if you haven't got a plane to catch or a train to catch. 
It might be an option. I might try it one day. The train arrived at the final destination right on time. And then the train just sits there and really awaits you to come back. Clap key mong cap. Clap key mong cap. Okay. 105 pm. Go back. Okay, thank you so much. And then there's a songtail service that takes you either to a navy ship or a little bit further on than that to a beach area. So I'm on the Songtel, it's going to take me, I think it first of all goes to the Navy boat. Um, I've been there before and as a foreigner I wasn't really made to feel that welcome so I don't particularly want to get off there again. Um, I'm going to go and look at the local beach after that I think and it's just explained you have about an hour to look on the local beach and then this Songtel will be back to jump on the train. Well, this is good nine bars value. Oh. Min I. My dung I. My dung I. There is the Navy ship in the background, and the true story is last time I went, they didn't even let me on, so I'm not risking that again. So, the first stop on this song tell was at the port, and people got off there to go and visit. There's a Navy boat there, but it's not interesting to me particularly. So I've stayed on a little bit longer and I'm going to a beach. I'm not sure it's a beach that I've been to before or not. I did see people giving the Songtel driver 20 baht as they got off, so added to my budget, that's 29 baht that I've spent to get here. I'm going to have to save up for the next trip. So the expenses are really mounting up because the area where the beach is you have to pay to get in. I'm not sure whether it's private land, navy land or just no idea why you have to pay to get in. But anyway, this thing in the tail is um, Thai people is 10 baht, foreigners five times as much, an amazing 50 baht. Even though I've got my Thai driving license with me, that was to no avail. So I got my ticket here, 50 baht paid. The Songtao driver is going to stay and pick me up later. And just here as you come, there's a place where you can buy some food and drink. And then this looks promising. I'm going to have a little walk down here after I get some water. Do bring some water onto the train, it's only an hour, but nevertheless, I was hoping for some people to come and be vendors on the train and sell some water, but they didn't. So, I'm quite thirsty now. But looking at this view, as I walk out towards the sea, there's a pier out there, and I can probably see a little bit of sand over there as well. I mean, I really have broken the bank today because what with the 9 baht then plus the 50 baht to get into here I'm not sure if I've got to pay for that song tell or not he hasn't asked me for any money yet but I'm sure he will later I mean altogether I'll be lucky to get change from 100 baht for this trip so I think that says in Thai language Tung Lao which means arrive already and then Hard Nang Ram which I think is a mispronunciation by me of the name of the beach. And if you do recognise some Thai language, it's a good idea to recognise Gafe Saad, which is fresh coffee. I'm not sure it's open or not, but it's a fresh coffee shop. And there it is again, Gafe Saad. Fresh coffee. From a shipping container. Yindi Dunrap, which means welcome in Thai language. We got a menu here. Cafe Sod, it says at the top. Second one down says chocolate. And cocoa on the left. And nom sod or fresh milk in the pink there. Oh, and have at the bottom kanom, which is snack or bread or cake or something delicious. What do you have? What do you have? latte yin. My one, how are you? My one, Lily. My one, Lily. Okay. So here is my cold drink. And here is the view that goes with it.
So just opposite the beach area, literally on the other side of the road, is all these different places where you can buy some food. And everyone seems very keen to sell something. Some of the prices they're quoting 50 baht for a dish, they don't sound that expensive. What do you have? Oh, let's have a look at your menu. Oh, yeah, it looks delicious. Okay, I'm gonna try here. Yeah, have pictures, so that's good. I can choose with a picture. Okay, let's eat. I just grabbed some chicken fried rice and something cold to drink. I also got a coffee. There's clean toilets on site. And then you can just relax for a while before it's time to get back on the Songtel. And the Songtel, he charged 20 baht each way. And please report that was the same cost for Thai people and for foreigners like me. So this is the route that the high speed link is going to take when that's finally operational. Any rumours that the rolling stock has already been purchased and is waiting for the high speed link are currently unconfirmed. There were some great views out the windows of the train, you could even see out of the rear of the train. Full Thai safety standards applied as you would expect. And on its return, the train left on time and arrived on time as well. So then by about 20 past 2 in the afternoon, the train is back at Pattaya. And from here the train goes into Bangkok. That's about another two and a half hours. But a lovely day trip down to the beach. And a nice extension. When you think that I paid nine baht for that train, that's a fantastic day out. Thanks for watching. If you enjoyed the video, don't forget to like and subscribe. I'll try and find you something else a little bit different around the Pattaya and Thailand area. But for me, as the train goes to Bangkok, it's goodbye. See you again very soon. Bye bye.